But he confabulated. He made up a reason for why he did what he did after some other process, perhaps, actually made the decision. So it seems like here we make decisions. We think we make decisions based on some sort of sensible procedure that's all conscious, and we go, yes, tick, 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 pros, tick, 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 cons. That one has more. But these bits of research suggest that some other process might be responsible for making the decision. And then a process takes that information and incorporates it, can, un, sorry, incorporates it into our experience to make sense of it. So what does all this mean? We have visual illusions suggesting that we take the context of where we're seeing things and it influences the way we perceive them. Size, color, motion. We have the limited scope of attention to actually pay attention to everything. And so we have a limited amount that we can incorporate consciously from the environment. We have memory that seems to incorporate what other people tell us. And we can believe things that never actually happened based on what people and the environment is telling us. And we will take the decision that we just made, incorporate that, and come up with a story that incorporates it and, again, tells us something that isn't actually happening. The brain, you might say, is lying. So what does all this mean? We aren't as aware as we think we are. We're constantly taking things in from the environment, but we're not doing it in a way that we're aware of. Attention is limited. It can only focus on a little bit, but there's still bits of things outside that are coming in, and then some process in the brain, perhaps as uh, Alan Alda, who narrated that documentary, by the way, uh, says, the thinking, speaking left brain comes up with a story that incorporates all these things together and explains it in terms of what the limited scope of attention was actually able to see. So I hope that you've enjoyed the talk and that your take home message is that uh, the brain lies to us. Thank you. So we still have a little time left, so if anyone would like to come and ask Rob some questions about his very fascinating research, um, please step forward. Hello, I have the gift of brevity. Um, <laughs> so uh, you mentioned some sort of a process uh, that happens, another process uh, before the rationalization um, in decision making. Uh, that is, uh, you suspect, the real motivator behind decision. Uh, I was wondering if you had any ideas what sort of a process that was and uh, that is and uh, how you think uh, that process evolved, why it serves us. That is a large research question. Um, my, I guess my hunch, uh, based on some research that I've seen into, into logic, judgment, and decision making, uh, like the behavioral eco economics type stuff, uh, you might have read Quirkology or uh, Predictably Irrational. Um, uh, there are heuristics to decision making that people think might have evolved to serve one or the other purpose to help with survival. Because our brains are limited in scope, we cannot take in every piece of information that might be important and make a decision based on it. It is a lot quicker and a lot safer if you need to make a really quick judgment to have some process that goes, ding, I'm going to pick that one because it fits particular characteristics that this heuristic lights up for. Uh, because once you try and take into account all the information and try and use all of it to make a really well-reasoned decision, 
you run into sort of computational problems because how do you compare and contrast all the bits of information? How do you power the brain to really handle all that information without overheating or overloading? I mean, we have enough trouble dealing with, you know, Facebook, Twitter, blog, RSS feeds, whatever, and filtering that amount of information without like just cutting large swaths of it out. So my guess is that the brain evolved in a similar way that people who were able to just focus on small bits of it and let underlying heuristics do the rest of the work that would otherwise take a lot of time and energy were more successful at doing everything than people who had to, ah, there's a tiger or some sort of form that looks like a tiger maybe in those rushes. Uh, well, I'm gonna have to have a sit and think about it. I mean, does it look hung? I mean, it doesn't even really look like a tiger. Maybe there's just, you see what I mean? I mean, the, the tiger example is sort of cliche in, in this regard, but that's my hunch. <laughs>